and amen and amen. Um, we began starting with the, the music this, this morning um, with my hope is built on nothing less. And, and now we are standing on the promises of God. And I hope y'all catch the theme that our foundations, where we are planted, where we are rooted is important. Pray with me now, if you will. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come seeking your face. We come, God, right now, in Jesus' name, looking for a word from you. Send your word into our hearts and into our minds, God. Pass your Holy Spirit through our ears that everything that we hear might be of you. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, Fill me with your spirit such that every word that comes from my mouth might be of you. God, in Jesus' name, hide me behind the cross that your people might see Jesus. Simply send your word, God, into our lives, into our community. Simply send your word, God, so that we can know what we must do to know you, that we can know what we must do to be saved, so that we can know what we must do just to make it through this thing called life. In the name of Jesus, send your word, God, and we will give you the thanks and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew 7. Matthew 7, and I will be reading verses 21 through 27. Matthew 7, 21 through 27. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and do many powerful deeds? And I will declare to them, nah, I never knew you. Go away from me, you lawbreakers. Matter of fact, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds beat against the house, but it did not collapse because it had been founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the flood came, the winds beat against that house and it collapsed and it was destroyed. the word of God, for the people of God. And we give thanks to God. I wanna take just a few minutes on this communion Sunday um, on the topic, process and reality. Process and reality. My mommy and my sister are here, so this is gonna be funny. Um, have y'all ever needed to get something done to go through a process, to, to move from one step to the next in order to accomplish something. Maybe it was creating something, sewing something, putting something together, but you needed to go step by step to get it done. You needed to, 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 to take the time to get ready, to, to prepare, to aim, and then to fire. You need to go step by step, trusting that if you follow the process, you will get what you need to accomplish, accomplish. I don't, I don't know if you remember what it was like to be graduating from high school and, and have to go step by step to get your diploma, or if you remember what it was like filling out college applications and you needed to go step by step in order to get it done. I don't know if you remember what it was like to be new in the church and having to go step by step to learn what it means to be faithful, to learn what it means to follow Jesus, to learn what it means to be a disciple. I don't remember if, if you've ever ever been in that situation in your life, if you've ever been in that situation in your family, if you've ever been in that situation with your health where you knew what the goal looked like and, and you wanted to reach the goal, but you had to go through the process and then you could only take one step at a time. You you couldn't jump over steps. You, you can't go around it. You can't go underneath it. You can't make up your own way. You have to trust the process. 
And the reality is that that for each of us in all of our lives and every single part of our lives, that, that God has already created the plan for us, that, that God has already laid out the steps that we must take, that all we have to do is believe God enough to follow the plan, that all we have to do is believe God enough to trust the process, that, that if we let go of our own will, if we surrender all and do what Jesus said, that, that we will hold on to the promises of God, we will see the fulfilled realization of God's promises if we trust the process. Our scripture this morning comes at the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, that, that wonderful sermon that begins with don't judge nobody because you ain't got the power to send nobody to hell. That wonderful sermon that he has, that he begins with telling people how to live their lives, how to be in good relationship with each other, how to recognize real and to recognize faithfulness. This sermon, this scripture that we have this morning here in Matthew begins with Jesus saying, look at here. I know y'all whole people with whole lives and y'all grown grown. And y'all been doing y'all's thing and y'all's way for all this time. But let me show you a better way. Let me give you better instructions for, for living life. Let, let me give you another way to live. Let me show you the way. And then in our scripture, Jesus says, so just do what I and that's, that's the plan that God has for each of our lives. That, that's the preparation that God gives us in order to follow the plan, in order to, to go through the process. God sends his word to us that, that we might know how to live better, that, that we might be able to relate to each other better, that we might be prepared for, for all of the steps that we're going to have to take, that, that we might be prepared for all of the storms that might come our way, that we might be prepared for everything that life has to give. He sent his word and Jesus spoke to us that, that we could be prepared and all we have to do is listen to Jesus. All we have to do is do what he said. All we have to do is read the Bible, not 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 the new revised brandy version of the Bible, but what the Bible actually says. All we have to do is trust God enough to believe that that if we hold on to what God has said, do to how God has said love each other, to how God has said love ourselves, that, that we will be able to follow God's plan, that we will be prepared to go through the process. And that's the first step of trusting the process. That's the first step in reality is, is acknowledging that God prepares us for the processes that we have to go through. That God prepares us with God's word, with God's love, that God has prepared us from the moment that we were born. That God knew us and calls us by name even before we were in the womb, that we are prepared to do the work that God has created us to do. And all we have to do is trust the process. And Jesus says, so now look, if you trust this process, if you do what I said, you're like a smart man who's got good enough sense to build his house and land that's sturdy to anchor the foundation of everything that he's doing in the rock. And a lot has been said about the difference between the sandy land, that's what we sang when me and my sister were little girls, but the sandy land and, and the rock upon which we are supposed to build. But, but it's, it's not just that Jesus is saying, build your rock in me, trust in me, put your faith in me. What he's saying is, I will make sure that where you are, where you plant your feet is stable enough for you to keep walking. I will make sure that, that where you are, where you plant your feet is sturdy enough to hold you. I will make sure that, that where you are, where you plant your feet is stable enough that, that when the storms come, you won't fall down. That, that when the wind blows, you won't fall over. That, that when the rain comes, you, you won't have to be afraid. If you fall 
follow my word, I, I will make sure that you are protected. If you follow my word, I will make sure that you know I am with you. If you listen to God, if you heed the voice of the Lord, then, then all of the storms may come and go and you will be able to see, I say, I feel the storm passing over. You will be able to praise God in the midst of the storm because you will know that you are planted in the rock, that, that you are have your foundation in a solid place. If you trust God and, and believe in God's preparation, God will place you where you need to be in order to complete the process. We've talked about how Philip was taken up. We've talked about how how Paul was moved. We've, we've talked about how the Spirit of God walks and moves through people's lives and moves us to where we need to be. Y'all remember the story of Elijah? I can see y'all say this, y'all all looking at me like, yeah, but what? Elijah was this prophet, right? This man who knew God, who believed God. And his, his time was done. He had followed God. He had done everything that God told him to do. And the Holy Spirit came, and this is the New Revised Brandy Version. Go read it for yourself. The Holy Spirit came and took him to where God needed him to be. Y'all remember the story of Jonah? I think I preached on that like 18,000 times in the last three years. He was a prophet, this, this holy man of God who heard what God said and decided he would do his own thing. Heard what God said and said, yeah, it don't quite work like that. And, and, and the Holy Spirit came and took him and dropped him in the belly of a fish and he was taken to where God needed him to be. If you trust the process, if you heed the word of God, then God will put you where God needs you to be in order that you may complete the process. If you trust God enough, even to just stay in communication with him like Jonah did, because Jonah had his own mind, but he still talked to God. If, if you trust God enough to acknowledge that God is God, then the Holy Spirit will come and put you where you need to be. That's, that's the second step of trusting the process. The, the reality is that we can't get to where we need to be by ourselves, that, that some of us are like me and want to take two steps at a time. Some of us are like me and want to create our own patterns. Some of us are like me and think we know it all, but, but God says, I will put you where you need to be. The, the Holy Spirit will wrap around you and pick you up and place you right where you need to be, when you need to be there in order to do the thing that God needs you to do. You will be prepared. You will be placed. And then you will receive the promises of God if you trust the process. Jesus says that the people who do the will of the Father will inherit the kingdom. They will see the Father. They will go to heaven. That's what he says, that it's not about going to church. It's not about knowing the Bible. It's not about having tongues. It's not about casting out demons. It's not about touching people and knocking them down. It's, it's about doing the will of God. And those that don't, no matter how holy they think they are, no matter what position they hold in the church, no matter even if they say, Lord, Lord, and speak in tongues and have the gift of the Holy Spirit, if they do not do the will of God, they will not see heaven. And the will of God is simply, according to Jesus, to love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And, and that is the summary of the Sermon on the Mount, that, that if you love God, you will treat your neighbor right. If you love God, you will treat yourself right. That if you love God, that, that you will heed God's word. That if you love God, that you will trust God to move you and to shake you and to shape you and to mold you. That, that if you trust God, you will believe God for the process and you will receive the promises of God for salvation. You 
will receive the promises of God for sanctification. You will receive the promises of God for eternal life if you trust God and, and follow God's will and do what Jesus said. Then you will receive the promises of God in fulfillment, not just in the other world, but here in this life. The promises that God said, I will protect you. The, the promises that God said, I will hear your call. The, the promises that God said that if you cry out to me, I will hear your prayer. The, the promises of God that says you won't have any need because I will provide for you. The promises of God that says I will make your enemy your footstool. The, the promises of God that says I will be with you wherever you go and I will never leave you alone if you trust God. God will give you God's promises if you follow the process. Um, y'all know my hair don't grow purple, right? Y'all look shocked. Um, it don't grow purple. And every time I dye it purple and new, everybody is like, wow. Because I got to go blonde first. I got to go blonde, blonde in order to get it purple. And I walk around blonde and people are like, there's a reason. And I'm going to go through this so y'all understand it. In order to get the purple that I get, I have to dye it in sections. I've got to follow the plan. I've got to make sure I put the bleach in the right sections. And I've got to do the roots last because the roots process more quickly. The roots go blonder faster than the rest of the hair. Even though all of this, all of this has been blonde for as long as I've had it, the roots will get whiter more quickly than all of this does. This won't hold color, but the roots will hold as much color as I put in them if I don't overprocess them. If I acknowledge that they will process more quickly than the rest of my hair. Why do the roots process faster? Because bleaching as a process is a heat-based process. And the parts of the hair that are closest to the source of the heat process more quickly. Let me try that again. Have y'all ever seen a plant, a tree, some grass, a flower? Y'all know how if, they're, if they're, they're planted in good soil, it's the roots. Well, even if they're in bad soil, like my yard, it's the roots that get the nutrients first, right? In, it, in the soil that they're planted in, the, the, the part of the plant that is closer to the source of the nutrients will soak up the nutrients first and process more quickly. Let me try that again. I, I don't know the process that you're going through in life. I don't, I don't know if you're trying to build a relationship, to, to construct a reality, trying to move on to the next step. I, I don't know what process you are in the midst of. If, if you're just trying to figure out how to be a disciple, how to make it through the next day, how to get through this summer with all of these kids. But, but if you stay close to the source, if you stay close to the source of the heat, close to the source of the word, close to the source of the power, if you stay close to God, then you will process more quickly. And, and what I mean by process more quickly is that it won't be a struggle because we were not meant to struggle. What I mean by process more quickly is that the trauma and the storms and the winds that come and want to wrap around you and knock you down won't have the power. If you stay close to the source, then you will be able to withstand the storms. If you stay close to the source, you will be able to make it through without the drama. If you stay close to the source of the power, then you will be able to see how you're going. You will be able to get there quickly. You will be able to get there holding on to your hope, holding on to God's hand, knowing that your hope is built on nothing less than God's righteousness. And if you stay close to the source, you will be planted. You will be built in solid rock. Trust the process. The reality is that as we go through life, it's process after process after process, movement after movement after movement. It matters where you plant yourself. It matters the dirt that you have around your feet. 
It matters how close you are to God. You cannot get through life living in sand. You have to bury your feet in the foundation of a forest. You have to bury your feet to hold on to the rock, the one that will keep you sturdy and stable. And that rock is the will of God that is found in Christ Jesus. We can't get there by ourselves, not through the summer with these kids, not to the next stage of life, not through the church anniversary, not to annual conference, not through the rest of this pandemic. We cannot get there by ourselves. But if we trust the process, the reality is, that God will get us where God needs us to be, the way God needs us to be there. God will prepare us, God will place us, and we will receive the promises of God if we trust the process. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, the invitation this morning is to be like my roots to get close to the source. And, and we do that not just by talking at God. We do that not just by making our petitions known through prayer and supplication. We get close to the source, the source of the heat, the source of the power, the source of faith, the source of love, the rock of all of our nutrients and our salvation. We get close to the source by shutting up listening and doing what God said. So the invitation this morning is to be quiet. The invitation this morning is to shut up and listen before God. The invitation this morning is to be still enough in your spirit and your mind that you can hear what God is saying to you. There's a meme going around on Facebook that you can't hear what God wants you to do. You can't hear what God is saying if you've made up in your mind what God is going to say. You can't trust the process if you won't get close enough to God to hear God. So you got to shut up your own brain. You got to shut up your own mouth. You got to shut down your own heart. You've got to hear God speak. And you've got to seek that. And the way to seek the presence of God is to shut up, be quiet, be still, and know that God is God. So I invite you to stillness this week. I invite you to silence. As uncomfortable as it might be. I invite you to get close to the source. In Jesus' name, amen. It is our brand new habit and tradition to uh, open up the mic and the chat for those who might have questions. It is Communion Sunday, so if you have questions, I invite you to ask them quickly so that we might prepare our hearts and minds for the sacrament of Holy Communion. So are there any questions? And while we are asking and waiting for those who might ask, please do now prepare or find your communion elements. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I'm kind of confused about Doing God's, doing God's will. If we're doing God's will and those things are those like feed the hungry, uh, help someone or all that, how is that not going to get us in heaven? I'm sorry, I don't understand. If, we're, if you're doing God's will, which is not the same as having the power, it's not the same as saying, Lord, Lord, if you are doing the will of God, that is to love your neighbor, 
as yourself, which is feeding the hungry, which is taking care of the poor, which is, which is doing justice and, and loving mercy and walking humbly before God, then you are God's and you are doing his will. And I, oh. I want to be clear that it's not just works, right? This is a, is a matter of faith that you believe God enough for your salvation, for your grace, that you will love on yourself and love on each other. That the works are what faith looks like in action. And that's what gets you to heaven. Does that make sense? Mm. You can say no. Kind of. I, I just, I, I might have to commune first before I can understand. <laughs> Well, it, it's a better understanding than what I had. Yeah. It's what, 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 what Jesus is saying here in Matthew 7 is that it's not enough to say, I had the Holy Spirit and I cast out demons. I had the Holy Spirit and I, and I was in charge. I had the Holy Spirit and I said all the right things. I led the people. I have the power. It's not enough to have the outward signs without the inward change mm, and the actual okay. acts, right? Like okay. I can say all I want to that I love God and I'm a Christian, but if I'm not showing it to people. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. That was good. Other questions? All right, let's prepare our hearts and minds for the service of Holy Communion. I'm going to add the preachers. Oops. I'm going to add and not replace the preachers so that we can um, do the service of Holy Communion. All of you who do earnestly and truly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God meekly kneeling. And all that says is if you know you did wrong and you fixed it or tried and you want to do better, you want to live better, you want to actually do what God said through Christ, you want to know the Holy Spirit and abide in the life of the Spirit. Come and renew your covenant. Receive grace and receive forgiveness. Let's join together in the general confession, which will be put up on your screen by not me. Uh, please read it and stay muted at home. Almighty God, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly their wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us of all that has passed and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with heartly repentance and true faith turn unto you? Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory to you, O Lord, most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. At this time, you should have something to chew, something to crunch, and something liquid to drink. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full and perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and who did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, God, we most humbly beseech you and grant that those of us who are receiving these your elements, these creatures of bread and wine, of grape juice, of, of Ritz cracker and pineapple juice, of whatever it is that we have on hand, according to your son, our savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion might be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and here, if y'all can lift up whatever it is that y'all have, I've got a Ritz cracker, don't eat it, just lift it up. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat this. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, and please lift up whatever it is that you're going to drink. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Take now that thing that you have that is chewable, This is the body of Christ, which is broken for you, which is given for you, to you to preserve your soul and your body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance of Christ. Take now your cup. This is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you to preserve your soul for the newness of life. Drink all of it. And as you do, feel the juice or the water pour down your throat and remember Jesus' blood shed for you. Let us join together now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly creator, we, your humble servants, desire your goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of your son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, that we and your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we, we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto you, humbly beseeching you that all of we who are partakers of this holy communion might be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. Although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, we beseech you to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O God, almighty world, without end. Amen. Um, Reverend Ford, if you will uh, sing the... Um, what a fellowship. Arm, arm song. Oh, is she gone? Yes, I'm here. Okay, can ever, anybody see Reverend Ford with me? Yes, she's here. Okay, so if you will sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, please. Okay, I don't see her or hear her. Linda, can you unmute yourself, please, and sing the everlasting arms? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness. What a peace of mind leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm, leaning, leaning. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that will be our benediction. And they went out with a hymn in Jesus' name. Y'all have a fantastic week. We'll see Anita at three. <laughs>